Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, myself, Sushant. Um, I'm working as a database solution consultant for Ashnik Technology. Mm, so, working on some various database technologies like Postgres, uh, some other open source technologies like MongoDB and Couchbase. Uh, to just briefly uh, tell about the uh, Ashnik, uh, we are open source solution provider company and uh, we are providing enterprise solutions on the open, uh, open source software uh, for various, uh, various, uh, I would say various clients. And about the topic, uh, so I'm, today I'm going to talk about the Postgres SQL uh, deployment on Amazon RDS. Uh, basically, I, uh, the reason I took this topic is uh, I, I was at one of my clients, I, uh, so it was kind of consulting and there they uh, came up with the requirement that they wanted uh, their new Postgres instance to be on Amazon RDS. So that was the time actually, I st even myself actually I started uh, digging more onto uh, Amazon RDS. So I thought uh, and when at that time actually I found it. It's, it's very easy to work on uh, 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 this thing, Amazon RDS. So I just want to share the same thing with you guys. Uh, so the agenda for this talk is uh, first, uh, I will talk about the challenges uh, which we have been facing for uh, maybe last few years and uh, the solution which was provided by uh, RDS. So when you are moving on to Amazon RDS or when you are using, you are deploying your Postgres instance on the RDS, uh, you can overcome those challenges and uh, what are the benefits? So why the customer would, uh, would want to move on to the uh, Postgres, the Postgres instance on the RDS? So I will also talk about that as well. Uh, so the guys who has been working uh, on po as, a post as a DBA, maybe for last 10, 15 years, so the, they might be aware that uh, like a like a decade back uh, we had databases or the or the server uh, which were deployed in in-house data centers and then we will have our DBA team or the in-house DBA team which who will take care of those databases so while we are deploying those servers uh, those servers will have some limited capacity uh, in terms of number of CPUs number of uh, amount of memory that you can allocate and the storage as well as well so so there was some limitations and uh, when you are planning the servers at so during those years when you are planning the servers you used to plan we guys used to plan uh, as per the business requirement considering how what will be the database growth or the business growth in the next three to five years and after five years if uh, during the, if that particular your uh, your uh, estimates if it goes wrong and if your growth has come up within a two or two years so your server usually it will start responding slowly because this CPU or your uh, resource level limitation has reached earlier than you have expected. Then it will result to some new upgradation. You will have to do some upgradation. You have to move again. You will have to plan for new storage or new server. And it is it was not easy during those year, years because you will have to. There was a procurement process that has to done. There was uh, it will result into some new kind of upgradation project. So there will be some separate team that has to be established who will take care of setting, uh, moving this existing infra into some new hardware. So it was a time consuming process. And the time taken for upgradation usually it, would, it was also more because time taken for upgradation or uh, would I, I would say for migration as well. And when it comes to debating, there has to be, there used to be like you have to have a separate DBA uh, which would have some uh, expertise or a particular skill set like now uh, for there has to be some DBA for the Postgres or maybe uh, some other RDMS which are there in the market and those they will take care of only those particular uh, uh, I will say the technology so that so that you you were not able to use the your DBS for uh, I would say extensively some other or uh, other RDMS so when you are going on the RDS Amazon RDS so the benefit is that uh, you are doing a deployment by using a web-based access control. So it is a web-based console through which you will de uh, do the deployment. It is a like a graphical user in interface. And uh, even for a junior DBA maybe or even person who has basic knowledge of the database, 
he can do the implementation easily just by just logging onto the screen. Uh, even I have tried to keep my slides uh, more with the uh, with the images because I'm not that good explaining those those things. So maybe my my slides will talk for me. So if you are planning to move on to the uh, if you are planning to move your Postgres instance on the RDS, so you just have to do one thing. Uh, you can yeah, you can log into this. Uh, this particular URL console.aws.amazon.com RDS and there uh, you can select the Postgres SQL as instance of your choice or the engine and then it will take you to the next slide so as you can see it's, it's very uh, interactive you just have to s the instance engine is like Postgres and uh, you can select the version of your choice. The current version, those are available, are starting from version Postgres version 9.3 to the latest, latest version uh, Postgres 9.6. So maybe as per your requirement, maybe you have not yet migrated your application. If it is still using the Postgres, maybe 9.4. So you have the options of selecting Postgres version 9.4 over here. But being a database consultant, I would definitely would suggest that if you are planning to move on to the RDS, you should try to upgrade your application and upgrade your database so that you can uh, take a benefit of the features which are available in the latest version that is Postgres 9.6. Then, then the next is about the DB instance class. So this is something about uh, you are aware of the CPU, the, the number of CPUs that you want and the, and the memory. So accordingly you can select your instance class over here. So this is something about the number of CPUs and memory. If you can see on uh, on the left side, actually, I just try to uh, have a detailed explanation here. So, in the instance class, uh, there are the instance class with particular CPU and the memory uh, configuration. So, if you are looking for for some kind of OLAP OLAP environment where this uh, usually there will be requirement of more number of CPUs and the uh, high uh, high RAM. So, maybe definitely you can go for something like DBR3 8x large, which has like number of 32 CPUs, 240, 250 around uh, GB of RAM, and uh, if you have some OLDB requirement, where even the as uh, along with the RAM and CPU, the storage also matters. The number of uh, the IOPS over there, then there is option uh, in the storage as well. So here uh, in the storage, there are two options uh, options that are available. Uh, one is the general SSD, and second uh, is the provision IOPS. Uh, so in the general SSD, uh, this particular storage, it is. Uh, uh, I will recommend it if someone like a, there are some small businesses, maybe startups, which are uh, which cannot afford to have the separate dedicated server, so they can go for the general SSD, uh, which will give them uh, option to select a storage, maybe starting from 5 GB, and the IOPS for the general SSD start along like uh, from 100 IOPS per second. That is the kind of storage you can get uh, over here. Whereas for the business, uh, like uh, maybe financial institute or maybe some other uh, highly transactional system, so there definitely you can select something. Uh, there is option provision IOPS. So uh, when you are going for the provision IOPS, there uh, the minimum IOPS that start is around like hundred, uh, one thousand uh, IOPS per second, and the storage that can be uh, around like hundred GB of storage that uh, that will be get allocated. Um, again, uh, in the provision apps, uh, you can have the like a storage of almost like uh, six terabytes. So, if you have that big of size of database, and if the requirement of IOPS is like around, uh, you can have IOPS ha as high as like thirty thousand IOPS per second. So, that kind of IOPS you can achieve by using the RDS over here. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Can we wait for the end for questions, or can we? Yeah. Or for the, the speaker and you for the yeah. provision IOPS right can mm -hmm. we change it afterwards or is this fixed? Oh uh, yeah, you can change it after as well, but uh, uh, then it will be some odd, uh, complex process. So if you have something that you know that okay, I I'm going to need some uh, kind of uh, IOPS requirement in the future. So it is best that you have it uh, in the beginning itself. Okay. Otherwise, there is an option that you can modify your uh, IOPS in the future. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. 
then there is something about the multi az deployment so this is something um, if you are if you are configuring your postgres instance so amazon rds actually provide this provide the resources in various uh, various location across the across the globe i would say so you can and those locations they have been uh, classified into some regions so there are regions like uh, asia pack regions in asia you can have singapore australia regions uh, those has been defined and uh, maybe there are few more as well and for america there is north america california uh, virginia kind of regions those are available so uh, the region maybe uh, since you are in singapore definitely you would like to go for the singapore region so you can select that region over there and uh, when you are selecting multi az a deployment so here az is stand for the availability zone so when you are enabling it uh, you will have some uh, synchronous replica so there will be a replica that will be generated uh, created in the back end and it will be a uh, synchronous so the synchronous uh, when i am saying syn uh, synchronous over here uh, it is the storage level replication that will happen so uh, amazon has the so very strong storage level replication and that that can be synchronous uh, but yeah one 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 thing here just uh, keep in mind uh, that this particular <coughs> synchronous replica it won't be available for read only uh, like it won't be uh, read replica it is the purpose of having it um, it will be uh, available for kind of failovers so maybe your if your instance if it goes down crash for some reason then uh, this uh, there will be failover happen and this particular this synchronous replica actually it will be promoted as a master or maybe if you are planning to do some maintenance on your master database that uh, that time also you can have control failover so you can use this uh, option over here and uh, so the uh, the replica that will be particularly uh, uh, maybe if you are selecting the region like uh, singapore so in the singapore also well there will be maybe two or three more data centers the over there so the synchronous replica it will be within the same region yeah after that again it is interactive so you have to specify the, your cluster name over here then you can specify the, your operating or your supervisor name here and the password and then you move on to the next slide so this is something about about your network security uh, since you are implementing amazon uh, your postgres instance on amazon rds so uh, the by default the uh, security group available or the virtual private cloud group available is a default vpc and then uh, you can select option whether you want your instance to be available publicly so when you are selecting as a yes so uh, you can access your instance maybe from outside the uh, cloud as well you can configure that uh, that as well so uh, this particular actually the network security it will define the uh, inbound and outbound rule so that you can control the inbound traffic to your instance so it is a kind of firewall to m ensure that only the authorized ips they will be able to connect to your server mm -hmm. then again database option so you can specify the, your database that you want to create port over here and uh, there is a db parameter group so uh, parameter group it is something like the configuration parameter that will control the behavior of the postgres instance so uh, you have the option to have your customized parameter group here but if you are not doing that uh, the default will be selected is a default parameter group and you can configure your instance accordingly uh, you have option in the future as well so you can have your customized parameter group you can create your uh, customized parameter group and you can assign them to your instance for uh, maybe to have some more optimization yeah you can also do the encryption over here see uh, backup so backup configuration had has been made very easy so for the dba who has been working uh, maybe uh, through to putty they might be aware that it was not just related to administration the implementation you, once you have done the implementation you also have to do configuration replica configuring replica configuring backup uh, configuring monitoring so that used to take a lot of time for dbas but because of this it will help them to save that time so you you can just select your backup retention period here and 
Uh, so it start from seven days, and I guess you can maintain the uh, maintenance. Uh, you can maintain the backup for almost like thirty days. And uh, you can select the uh, backup window here. So, so you can specify the time, maybe as per your business requirement, or you can specify the off peak time where your backup can start, and you can specify the duration for which it should be allowed to run. Yeah, and then there's the option for monitoring. Uh, yeah, you can select the monitoring. You can enable the monitoring. And it will enable the, uh, I will say, the very good graphical uh, uh, reporting or the monitoring tools. So that we will see in the next slides. There is an option for maintenance as well. So if you are selecting, uh, if you are setting it on, then uh, the minor version upgrade, um, uh, the upgrade for the Postgres version as well. Actually, that can be done during the maintenance window. So that and that will be automated. So. Uh, when you are specifying the maintenance window, so maybe I just for example I set it as Sunday, and the upgradation. So if there is any patch, that has to minor a patch upgrade. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna ask, what's the backup happening? What's what's the backup solution happening for that? Oh, it's a kind of file system level backup, normal backup. So that will be hot backup, I would say. Like it's an incremental backup or a full backup. Or it will be full backup. It's snapshot plus incremental. Yeah. So you the first snapshot is full and then incremental. It's, it's actually storage level backup, I would say. Yeah, and, and there's actually a backup done when you launch. It's so totally outside of Postgres. Yep, totally outside. And just a warning on this you see that it's got UTC after the start time? That means it's essentially like Greenwich meantime, right? So some customers, when they launch these, they put the backup window at that time, which of course in Singapore is not Yeah, yeah, that you have to right? take care, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so just have to make sure that you are converting the time as per your time zone over here. Yeah. So like it's every week once, it will take a full backup, and then on a succeeding day, it will take an incremental snapshot? No, no. It it's just takes, when you launch, it does a full backup. <coughs> so it does a snapshot for the whole thing. Every every day after that for seven days we'll do incrementals. We we just do incrementals. Oh, so then like if by chance I need to do a recovery of point in time recovery. Yep. Uh, so the way that we good to have a in between snapshot or like a differential backup or something like that. Yeah. So the way we do the incrementals, you can even delete things in between, and we'll still be able to use incrementals. There's very smart technology behind the scenes there. So we don't actually need to take full. So you, in addition to having these backups, uh, and and here you also have archiving happening, which is uh, now that is one of the things which is disabled for users to change. Now there are some parameters which user can change, and there are some parameters which user cannot change. And archiving is one of those parameters yeah, which yeah, user yeah. cannot change. The archiving of what files? Yeah, yeah. For yes. every, every five minutes. And uh, it is every five minutes. It would be really nice if that is at least configurable, uh, the, the duration of it, because I would want to be in control of what RPO I want to sign. Uh, well, but that's where the multi ac comes in, right? So the, the, the snapshots up a point in time recovery if a complete disaster has happened. That is there, but I, I mean, if, for example, yeah, but I can also achieve that if in case of an error I can force a switch, yeah. So uh, you can uh, you are having uh, archive logs there, and which are used for uh, some point in time recovery if needed. And, and I'll just say one more. Sorry, I'm fixed. Yeah. These are things that people get wrong. Um, on the maintenance window, you see that window there, and it's like one hour every week. And a lot of people say, "God, there's going to be downtime once every week at this time." No, <laughs> that's just when when the patches are do, We will do it in that time. Which could be twice a year. Uh, yeah, and one more thing. So, if you have some like a uh, read replica available, in that case, uh, uh, like the uh, if you are doing some minor version upgrade, so first you should do it on the rep, uh, your read replica, then on the primary server. And just one more question. Yeah, like if uh, we need to do a restore. I don't want to restore it in my original database. I want to restore in some kind of a standby. Is there an option of it? Uh, so when you are doing the restore, actually it will be on the new server itself. So it will be new instance that will be created. So that's okay. it. So like just in case I... Um, let's say that like 
my database is working fine, the current database is working fine. It's, the, it's just the issue, some user deleted something, mm -hmm. and I wanted to just revert back only that particular paper information or something like that. <coughs> Uh, well, uh, at this moment, that kind of fe uh, features mean not available. That you cannot restore so particular table. You will have to, do to restore the whole, restore whole, the whole backup. Into some kind of a standby and then just take out that yeah, table yeah. which we want. Like there's nothing like an export, import. Schema no, this export this is the restore. Backup. The restore that will happen here. It is the like a storage restore. So the backup, the snapshot will be restored and then the recovery will happen. But is there a provision like to take a logical backup? Um, no. A schema level no. backup? You can store the PG dump, right? PG dump, yeah. yeah. So, there's nothing stopping you from a client doing a PG dump or extracting that. So you cannot do it? That needs to be done at the client. 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 Yeah. But I thought you cannot use some of the client backup tools uh, like, uh, like what Simon mentioned. Earlier yesterday, uh, you cannot use PG dump, for example, with RBS instance. Uh, I, I, I thought you could, but yeah, I, I, I was just constrained. Uh, I, 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 I was sure. PG dump, you said you cannot use with RBS. PG dump, oh yeah. PG dump, PG dump. There's a so-called PG dump all. PG dump all, yeah, yeah. You cannot use PG dump all with RBS, but yeah, you cannot use that with RBS. So you cannot. Yeah, so for example, if you want to back up your users, you cannot back them up. Not the user schema. Like schema you can, with PG dump you can. Uh, for the RDS? For RDS, yes. yes. It is a client side tool. So, so for, for SQL Server, we've introduced native backup, uh, so you can do a dot back. And you know, customers are saying, can you please do that for all of the instances? Don't say SQL Server more time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying as an example. <laughs> Um, so then, you know, across all of the engines that we support, including Postgres, then that's something that we can look at. Yeah, so yeah. Let's 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 go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Let's not eat this time. So, so this is done. You are just configuring backup, monitoring, and maintenance, and just click here, launch DB instance, and your your uh, Postgres instance will be launched. So it's, it's that easy, just few clicks and you will create, set up your Postgres instance. Then there is an option to even to configure the replica. So create a replica here. Uh, so if you're planning to have some reporting uh, on your on your uh, standby server, read replica, so that you can achieve here. Uh, and the, the option available with the read replica is that uh, you can even select the storage for read replica. So maybe if you're selecting uh, like provision IOS for the production, but for uh, standby, uh, you can still select the general SSD. But again, uh, I will recommend that you should have the same storage for the master and, st or, and your read replica as well. So that you will get the same kind of performance here as well. Then uh, the destination region, so here you can select where do you want your replica to be configured. So you can configure it across the region. Maybe your your primary is running in Singapore and you want your replica to be configured. Yeah. Is the replica co-standby? A co-standby? It is by read only, is it? Yeah, it is read only. only. Yeah, it is read only. Like can you have active active something? Uh, active active, no, it is not available in even in Postgres, and when you are configuring on RDS, it is not possible. Like on standby, when the master dies or something else, but no, that the would be later. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Postgres, with the media, we can have that, right? Okay. Yeah, that, that is, but that is, at the moment, is not available here. Yes. But BDR also, they will have some kind of, slightly some latency, that, and it may cause kind of conflict at some point. Yeah, so from the price perspective, the boy, should I pay for the second replica server? Yeah, you will have to pay for that as well. Uh, sorry? So I should be selecting it wisely? Yeah. From the okay. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. So you can select the region. Maybe you, if you want, you can configure a replica in some of, some across some other region as well. 
then about the parameters so once you have configured your instance and if you want to have some customized parameter here uh, so that also you can do so if you want to change maybe uh, your auto vacuum uh, analysis scale factor or maybe your uh, checkpoint completion target or maybe a uh, log duration min statement so you can do that and you can customize your parameter as per requirement and just have a look so monitoring it has been made very easy uh, so you can have the graphical representation uh, it will give you the nice view of the CPU utilization at the your server level then the number of connections uh, those are connected at the database level or oh, sorry at the instance level I would say and even a uh, write and read IOPS so that also can be viewed through the graphical uh, dashboard so yeah you can even configure some kind of uh, like a uh, event subscription so here uh, you can select the, the I would say the kind of alert you want to configure maybe uh, you can select from the instance so if the instance goes down if there is some backup that has been configured or if there if you want uh, alert configuration for if any parameter change that can be also done so you can select the parameters uh, here so if someone is changing the parameter uh, you should get a notification so that kind of event subscription you can do here and there is there is a uh, 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 so once you are doing that uh, then you should start getting this kind of alert so just for my purpose actually I configured for CPU utilization so when I was doing some kind of activity and when the CPU went high I immediately get alert and uh, even uh, there is Amazon CloudWatch so there also actually we will keep on getting the uh, notification about the if there is any generation of the events so this is the CloudWatch so here as well you can get a history about the, uh, the alerts to which are getting generated and even about the history. You can have the so putty, putty kind of view of the error logs so uh, the error which are getting generated so you can uh, see those error through the GUI prompt. You can have those uh, view for those error as well. And for the DBase yeah they will have some limited access because there will not be direct access to the host on which the actual instance is running but they can still use the amazon rds commands the commands like this are the few commands uh, which i copied here so you can uh, even create a db instance if you want to create a replica that is also possible if you want to modify some parameters that can be done or uh, you can even do the point in time recovery of your instance so these are the very uh, few parameters or the commands that can be done but those are the AWS RDS commands so from the benefit perspective definitely uh, it will reduce it will help you to reduce the cost for infrastructure definitely because when you are having your own hardware with the CPU definitely you have to pay more here you will pay as per your uh, resource consumption so if you are using just like uh, if you are going for general SSD you are selecting some particular kind of storage and memory so you will just pay for that and yeah if you are going for the provision IOPS definitely you will have to pay for the provision IOPS because that is something that has been allocated for you. So you may not be using the all uh, provision IOPS or the provision storage but still you will have to pay for that. The patching yeah patching it is it is automated you, it will be done it will be taken care by you no need for the DBA to be there available on the weekends they can just do a no they can just look at the on a notification you can use your DBS time for more more uh, fruitful tasks like uh, they can work with the application team they can they can help them to do the schema design or maybe to do the application tuning or the query tuning that kind of task so and you can have the DBS to work on the more number of databases more for footprint and because <coughs> Uh, when you are using your Postgres instance, mm, so that kind of the uh, expert is required. So that that is not the, that much. So even the junior DBs actually they can take care of those things. Yeah. So no additional skill set required. They should have basic knowledge that that even that will be helpful. So it was all about the skill set or the benefits. Uh, but there are certain. 
points that I would like to uh, bring to your notice, like synchronous replication, like if you're config, uh, there is an option of synchronous replication at the Postgres instance level. So that is something not available. So if you're configuring replica, so the replication, it will be asynchronous replication. So if you are thinking that uh, you are doing some transaction on the primary and if you immediately want, it will be, it should be available on the standby side. So it, you may not achieve that soon. And from the DBA perspective, who are always comfortable logging on to Putty and doing the administration task, they will not have that that freedom over here. Yeah. So these these are two limitations. Yeah, I can think of. And definitely, if you are going for Amazon, it will help you. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Uh, I think I. But I, I have to ask, I mean, uh, so all those uh, various features that we just uh, got to listen to, hmm. I mean, uh, none of them are open source, right? Uh, in, so except for Postgres itself, mm -hmm. everything that we just discussed is a paid service. And um, I mean, with FOSS, uh, probably I, I, I'm just Maybe that's just me, but I'm not able to link the, the, the stuff in. Okay. Because you see, we're talking about a paid service that's providing some feature set. Uh, and if you are using that, mm -hmm. um, it becomes very hard to move to something else, even if you are uh, using Postgres. Because okay. all those feature sets will not be available on any other vendor page or, or on any other platform. Uh, which particular feature set you are talking about here? So because for example, uh, you just mentioned how we can easily set up a replica. Mm -hmm. uh, with a few clicks, we have a replica running. And, and you did mention that there is a, a drawback that it's not synchronous. Mm -hmm. Fine. But those clicks will probably not be, uh, not be available anywhere else. It's, it's a paid service, right? Yeah. But the basic thing here that the the Postgres software you're, you're using, it is a community software, like, right? So if, you, so if you plan to maybe, for some reason, if you want to move on to from here RDS, definitely you can take a backup. And you can restore because you are not actually it is not kind of fork which has some extra features. Basically, you are basically using the same features which are available in the community postgres. Uh, the services, these are definitely there are some services like uh, the synchronous replication, so uh, which is provided by uh, Amazon RDS, but it it doesn't tie you up with the particularly with this particular product. If in the future, if you want to move on, you can easily. No, I, I can certainly move on. I can, I can take a backup and restore it somewhere else. Yeah. But then all this will not be there. Yeah. All those single clicks, all those more things, all may, those graphs. If, 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 if yeah. I may add something, uh, because I I tried Amazon RDS. Now I do have some customers, and I do have some people with whom you know, I work, and they can't move their data to RDS, or they can't move their data to AWS. But looking at this gave me an inspiration of how I could build those things for them. So if, uh, and this is something I, I got as a tip from one of the partners I worked with, one of their solution architects, gave me this free advice, told me that you are a DBA, and uh, developers looks at a DBA as a, as a foe, not as a friend. Same as DBAs don't really go very well with the infrastructure guys. Now, I have to marry infrastructure guys, not really marry, marry, but uh, I really have to start getting along with them and start understanding how can I use the virtualization capabilities. And I do work with some enterprises who are trying to build automation using their infrastructure. So for example, what you see in AWS, now what they are doing is proprietary, of course I understand that, because they are doing it and exposing only an interface. But take that as an inspiration and you can do the very same things with, uh, with, with VMware, that is not open source again, but you can do that with OpenStack for very sure, uh, whatever AWS does at the back end. It uses uh, some really nice integration. That is all it does. So it is using Postgres SQL. It forks off a replica. And after that, uh, it, it, is, it is just automating the process, which can be done if you utilize your infrastructure services very well. And we do do that with some of the customers, and that's why I can say that very confidently. Right, but, but in, in all that discussion, uh, there was no mentioning of OpenStack or any other open platforms, right? So uh, when, when you're talking about ease of use, you're talking about ease of use of Postgres. And that means you should cover the whole spectrum, where you should actually talk about other tools that ease that thing. For example, monitoring. But okay. when you're talking about those graphs, those fancy graphs, 
they could be done in some other open uh, software. So, was there a question or is there a feedback for the speaker? So, if yeah, there is yeah, feedback, I, I, I he, he would take that. If it's a question, then he, he will feel an urge to answer. So, if it's a feedback, he will just take it. If it's a question, then he will have an urge to answer it. So you get what I'm saying, right? So the point here is that, I mean, people uh, listen to all that and they are persuaded by certain uh, certain things that, that are mentioned in the talk, right? So uh, it is possible that there are people who are looking for only open, soft, uh, open source solutions, right? So uh, the talk should actually cover the whole spectrum and if, if it is about, talk, it's talking about these issues. Sure, sure. And how, how you cover the monitoring part and how you can sure, 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 sure. So I, I guess yours is not more of a question, it's a feedback. So he takes I, it as yeah, a feedback yeah, uh, for his talk. I take it as a feedback because I selected the talks. So I also take it as a feedback. Yeah, I, I'm coming and, 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 and to close, close, the, close so. the loop for everyone's knowledge. Whatever AWS does in, in their Amazon interfaces, where it makes that replica creation or the, the backup creation easy for you, you can do all that with a little bit of engineering by putting all that logic in OpenStack or, or with Docker as well. You can do all that with containerizing uh, your database. Good that everyone is not here, he would have killed me for that. But mm -hmm. you can uh, also run it uh, as a container uh, with a volume. Now, Docker's do support volumes. So you can run it as a, as a database in a container. And you can do that uh, pretty easily. In, you just have to right. spend a lot of effort engineering it. But after that, life gets quite easier. Right. So, so, so that does mean that this, this is not the only solution. Yeah, yeah this is not a, yeah. is, this is so one of the solutions that actually uh, So, thank, thanks for bringing that so, up. So, I think going, going through that whole talk, it appeared like that's um, the, the impression that I had at least. And then coming from the first point of view, I mean, at least the spectrum should be covered in some way. So, it's okay. it's just more of a feedback. Uh, because sitting here, uh, what the, the way I perceived it, it's, it's more like a feedback, yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether there is any sort of block balancer. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, you can. Is there any sort of block balancers on top of RDS? Uh, there is, as such, uh, there is not available from the, from the, I would say, Amazon RDS. So, uh, if you're config, you, need, you, you can use some application slash site uh, load balancer. Like so if I have a cluster with one master and a couple of replica, mm -hmm. how to distribute the load uh, among the risk replica is on my own. Yeah. yeah so uh, I guess there are HA proxy kind of tools, I think. Yeah, but again, you have to be very careful, like what he's saying. Uh, it is not synchronous replication, so you cannot be sure about what you're reading. Yeah. It, it might be still data. Yeah. Which is the same for all sub replicate. Sorry? Uh, which is the same whenever you have a cluster. No, not really. In Postgres 96, you can have read consistency on the replicas. So you can say that my read replicas are consistent with my master. So when you read, you are very sure that you are reading the latest data. And you can say that multiple replicas are read consistent. Uh, yeah, by making the replication rate uh, synchronous. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, how, how much does the uh, Amazon? Uh, AWS take the responsibility of the compatibility with some compliance uh, regulations. So for example, if I use, if I decide using the RDS, does it some, does it somehow give uh, compliance with the uh, PCI? Okay, just, just for regards, he's not from AWS. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I I can, maybe yeah, you can answer the question. Just about the features of Postgres. Uh, if it's a short answer, you can add that. But if it's a long answer. Yeah, it's a short answer. Yeah, okay. So we, we published we all, of the, uh, yeah. all of the uh, things that we've gone through in terms of ISO standards, uh, PCI DSS, HIPAA, uh, etc. Uh, so they're all by service and they're published on our website. So if you have anyone you need, just you can go and check. Mm -hmm. It changes all the time because it's basically every six months like yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Just one last question. Mm -hmm. um, like we talked about the patching. So uh, when we say like that, uh, I want my database to be patched like, and it fits the DBA. So at the Amazon level, whether it is really automated process, like nobody does that. And yeah, everything on RDS is automated unless there's a support issue. Okay. So it, it really is it's purely automation. That's what RDS is about. So it's like, I think, like DevOps. It's totally about DevOps. 
So, uh, do I get any notification before it's, uh, some batching is going to happen? Oh, absolutely. So if we're going to do, let's say there's a um, security issue that we need to take, and a couple of the Postgres versions have some security issues that we need to take off and make unavailable. Um, so if you're fine, we'll give notification that around a month plus that we're going to do something. And do you have the option to say, I, I don't want to... No. For security? No. Some other... <coughs> well, for other patches, you can set off the auto-update, so you can just stay on and stay on the patch. So it's not yeah. you don't need to. But sometimes, like if let's say, for a auto if let's say 964 comes out, and there's a major security issue on all previous versions, we will deprecate all previous versions. Yeah, because we can't have that security issue. But if you look at all the versions there, there's my three dot, blah, 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 and my four dot, blah, blah, all the there. But there's a bit of gap because of uh, some security issues. All right. <coughs> okay, thanks. Okay, guys. Uh, Thank you. Next session is. Uh,